Has it really been six years since I last talked about Genocyber? Because it seems so... not long enough ago. Now it comes as no surprise that I don't look too kindly toward that review, much like every other video I did before 2014, but I do stand by the points I made about it back in the halcyon days of 2012. Too preoccupied with being a fuck humanity gore fest to actually be entertaining, Genocyber is one of the poster children of bad violent schlock that tagged the anime market back in the early and mid 90s. However, I bring up Genocyber today because its director, Koichi Ohada, has had a far reaching effect here on Anime Abandon. A mechanical designer and storyboard artist by the majority of his career, Ohada has been part of quite a few titles that I've covered previously, including directing MD Geist. Uh, the director's cut and sequel, mind you, not the original unedited OVA. From Dangayo to Macross 2, Ohada is the unseen hand that has drawn many a mech that has graced the anime abandoned screen. And no one can stop him, not even you, Krauser! <laughs> Perhaps Grace isn't quite the word, but nevertheless, he's had his many downs over the course of the show, so I think it's time for him to have an up which is why we're talking about today, his directorial debut, Cybernetics Guardian. On the face of it, Cybernetics Guardian seems like a complete retread of Genocyber. And you're not wrong, but you're also not right. Guardian came out in 1989, whereas Genocyber came out in 1994, so it's more fair to say that Genocyber is a retread of Cybernetics Guardian. Splitting hairs aside, the retread label is actually quite apt, because the stories of both anime are pretty similar. Except, Cybernetics Guardian is way better. If you remember correctly, Genocyber was about twin girls that had the ability to merge together to create a mechanical god baby that laid waste the kingdoms of man for their sins, and then for some reason they were the subject of a cult that was worshipped in the post-apocalyptic future by terrible voice actors. And he stilled the motion of the earth and fertilized the seed with his own heart. And we are that seed! Whereas Cybernetics Guardian is also about a mechanical god baby bent on destroying the kingdoms of man, but it's only 45 minutes long and there's no weird digressions into Mad Maxville and no out of nowhere child molestation, which just leaves us with a violent, cheesy shit show. And I can get behind that. This is Cybernetics Guardian. Ooh boy, you know you're in for a treat when the very first thing you see in your late 80s ultra-violent OVA is the skeleton of a winged demon crucified before a hooded cult. That is how you start a shit burger, folks. We are denied his awakening this night. But the Lords of Doldo... Uh, excuse me, the Lords of what? The Lords of Doldo. Did I accidentally put in the porno spoof of Cybernetics Guardian? What would that even be called? Uh, Cybernet Tits Guardian? Woo, that one was hilarious, Swab. Don't patronize me. Apparently, the Lords of Doldo are worshipping a god baby that'll cleanse this impure earth named Saldo. And right before you can even make the obvious where Saldo joke, we cut to an establishing shot of the city of <laughs> Cyberwood in the far off future of next year. It was back in 1995 that Astonite was discovered, a material capable of absorbing human psychowave energy. You know, there's cribbing. There's a type of energy called chi which blows like a savage wind through that universe. The name that I have given to that wind is Vajra. And then there's outright copy and pasting. Oh, and hi, Tree of the Sephiroth. Didn't expect to see you, but you fit just as well here as you did in Evangelion. We cut to the present day, where apparently they're testing out a new power armor suit for their Warhammer campaign, when an obvious villain arrives. I wanted to see your new guard suit in action myself. This will finally show the Alpha Project Committee that it works. Yeah, that's right, Adler. Now we finally have a way to save cancer from itself. Okay, I know how that sounds, but in this universe, cancer is just a slum of cyberwood. So no, they're not evil. It's just that the anime is stupid. Right off the bat, you can tell that this is borrowing more than a few notes from Robocop, even down to one of the female researchers giving a kiss before a demonstration. So it's pretty safe to assume that this here will be our Dick Jones. 
But what reason could he possibly have to want to undermine this crucial, life-saving endeavor? The feds are counting on the Alpha Project to clean up that waste. But Layla's bleeding heart plan isn't the way. It allows the possibility of those destructive elements surviving into the city's future. They're penetrating the bureaucracy! Yeah, Dick's motivation is completely bonkers, but hey, one reason is as good as any to shit in the apple pie. He vows to not let the demonstration go without a hitch, seeing as how a power suit that can disable robots without firing bullets is something he can't abide by. Now, I wonder how being able to do this is supposed to help a slum not be a slum, because that doesn't take into account that people have, you know, guns. But what confuses me is that while Dick insinuates that what's happening to the suit is because of his sabotage, the anime shows otherwise. What with the cult leader here reaching out to, uh... Some other type of energy is invading, John! Yeah. That. So, is what's happening to him because of the cult, or Dick? Can't be both, because we later find out that the two have nothing to do with each other, so is this just a happy coincidence? But what really confounds me is when we find out that Murphy survived that horrific accident, it pisses Dick off. What do you mean? He didn't blow up along with the suit? What do you care if he lived or died? I thought your problem was with the suit, not the guy driving the suit. It blew up just as you were hoping it would, or expecting it would, somehow. So mission accomplished. But no, he lived and now you got this murder itch that you gotta scratch. Oh well, time for an awesome breakdown! I have no idea what's going on, but it's metal and I love it! I guess a member of the cult used Astonite to somehow abduct Murphy for their evil schemes and it's being backed by the most glorious of 80s Japanese cheese metal. Wait a minute. A futuristic nonsensical plot with over-the-top villains backed by cornball metal? This is just heavy metal. You know, without all the boobs. Boo! Seems that the cult believes that within Murphy, here lies the god baby that they've had the weirdest boner for. And they might be onto something as he inadvertently explodes the vehicle they got him in, much to the delight of this spumco looking dork. Freeze. <sighs> Stop right there. Don't even try and breathe. Oh man, you better do what he says. Officer Seamus ain't screwing around. What's your name? John Stalker. There is no goddamn way his name is John Stalker. Unless he was being played by Steven Seagal. Seeing as how no one knew how to get Murphy out of this scene, they just have him poltergeist right out of there. You know. Because as tonight, which might as well sum up everything we've seen so far. We're only about 13 minutes into the anime, but I think you can all tell that this heap isn't gonna have a plot. And you'd be right! Scenes just kind of happen with little rhyme or reason, as we see here where Dick is having a nightcap with, uh, what's her face? Layla, if you want me to, I can even help you get the research going again. Come on, Layla. You got me on my knees. Oh, it's a morphine joke. Suave, that would be Lila. Heh, <laughs> well, that wouldn't be the first time I got those names mixed up. But at least you didn't pour pipe and hot coffee in my lap because of it. And BAM! Dick and Layla are in a car where they just happen upon the cult holding a ceremony to formally awaken the god baby within Murphy. You see what I mean about how this anime has no sense of plot or progression whatsoever? But because of that, the anime just cuts to the chase and gives us what we all want. Balls to the wall stupidity. Like here when Dick somehow got into the cult sanctum to assassinate Murphy using a scoped quad barrel pistol. Yep, that's impossible. You, you mean John's dead? Yes, Layla, he's dead. Sacrificed by those devil worshippers. That. Oh shit, it looks like Murphy isn't dead. You better ram him into the vents and then activate your inexplicable electric trap on the hood of your car. Why do you even have that? 
you know, say what you will about this being dumb, because it very much is, but at the very least, it knows what side its bread is buttered. From Robocop to gritty Technoman reboot, the god baby is finally awakened and just tears Dick a new hole, but leaves him alive? Damn you, John! Damn you, Murphy! It's just like you to turn into a gigantic cyber demon and nearly rip my head off. You've been doing that shit since we were five! How comically single-minded is Dick that he sees Murphy turn into a horrific nightmare ripped straight from Doom, and he's still pissed at him because he was born in cancer? In fact, he didn't even know until after he tried to kill him the first time! Cancer... was where John was born. What? He's from there? Is anyone even at the helm of this Titanic? Because the iceberg is fast approaching, and I can only pop so much corn. Seeing as how even a slot car racer has to hit the brakes sometimes, the anime comes to a grinding halt when it realizes that it's about half over and we don't know, well, anything. Might as well start with why Murphy has the god baby inside of him, as explained by Jerky Face here. Are we awake, Miss Layla? Uh, I don't know. Are we in a schlocky anime? Are you aware that man has known of Astonite since the Middle Ages? I recognize you now. So, now you remember me. Wait, I know we've heard that music before. Oh my god, is that from Legend of Lemnir? Huh, would you look at that? Both were animated by AIC. It's almost like there's a connection or something. Twelve years ago, we implanted seeds of hatred into boys here in Cancer. All so one could wear the Saldo armor. I hope you meant to say that you planted seeds of hatred figuratively, because literally that makes no sense. Actually, it makes no sense either way. Okay, bottom line is that this guy wanted to purify the world with the Saldo armor and gathered a bunch of kids from cancer and did stuff to them, and one of them was Murphy. And by the way, while all of this is being explained, Murphy has been going absolute ape shit, including somehow poofing into being right behind the mayor of Cyberwood and tearing his gat dang head off. And then he spends the next four minutes just plowing through city cops, culminating with him turning dropped napalm into a fucking fire tornado. Awesome! That's really awesome! Jesus fucking H Christ, this is so stupidly metal it could be used to plug in that hole in Cousin Eddie's head. Oh, but trouble's brewing because Dick shows up again and he's put his brain in a robot body. You know, like you do. I'm gonna be an Adrian Barbobot. This would normally be the point where I say that the anime has lost the plot, but that would imply it had one to begin with. And what about Layla, for the three of you who might be asking? Well, she's having weirdly stopgap nightmares about Murphy. Ah! Ah! Okay, I'm over it. Who's this guy? Why did he make Layla dress like an Egyptian princess? Why does Layla strike at Murphy in his god baby mode? Why is any of this happening? Well, the answer is... Look, I've gone over this scene multiple times, and the best I can come up with is that this was an attempt to get Murphy to forget his humanity and fully become the god baby, but then that doesn't explain why Layla slashed at him, or who this guy is, or why he looks like a malformed Volus from Mass Effect. Like nearly every other scene here, it has no lead up to it, no logical connection to anything, it's just... there. Oh god, this anime is starting to make me think. Quick, do something stupidly violent! Never thought I'd see the day where I would be glad to see you, dick. That thing... you didn't... I was going to use this to sweep those rats from their nests. Until you had to interfere. Adler, are you insane? You brought the genocyber out here? And that was the sound of Central Park Media taking a dump in all of our faces. Is it any wonder why they sold both these anime together? 
Dick steals away Murphy to kill him at the training ground from the beginning because, oh yeah, this guy just seems like he is all about the poetic death, leaving Layla to be rescued by, uh, Officer Seamus again. Yeah, that's about the right reaction for him. This guy who's turned into the monster. John. Right. Right, uh, I'm not so sure I buy all this story. All right, now I feel like I gotta apologize to Seamus. Do you see what you've done, anime? I've been kind of skirting around it, but the dub... Yeah, it's quite poopy. The lip flaps are horribly timed, if they're timed at all. The performances are the very definition of amateur and wooden. And nearly everyone here never went on to do much of anything else of note. Except for Layla, who was also olive oil in Strangelove. Ah, Sushi Sushi! <laughs> what a weird name! <laughs> in fact, these performances are so terrible that the actors get special credits at the end, including character profiles and montages. Of all the anime to highlight an actor's name and role, it's Cybernetic's Guardian. It's almost like a cruel joke that the editors played on them, like they intentionally wanted people to know who turned in these kinds of performances. Uh, sure that detective didn't have a dream about King Kong? How the hell should I know? Still, the end is not far off as we head to the climactic final battle, which basically boils down to a one-on-one -on -one game of Twisted Metal. It's hardly a fight, seeing as how Murphy has a, frankly, hilariously anachronistic broad axe, but Dick is, well, a dick, and uses Layla as bait. How does he save her? her while she was still falling later, but how pissed should Layla be after that little stunt? It's like, oh yeah, I love you Layla, and I would do anything for you, but this shitbag dies first! Then I'll save you from a falling screaming death! And that's the end! <laughs> I think the kindest thing I can say about it is that there sure wasn't a lot of plot to get in the way of that story. Though I will fully admit that I'm being tongue-in-cheek with my enthusiasm for this turd of an anime. I mean, look at it for crying out loud. But I do feel that Cybernetics Guardian does have a unique charm about it that few schlock anime manage to achieve. Being terrible and entertaining at the same time. The animation is bottom rung, there's practically no story or plot, character motivation is a confused mess, but it's also an anime where mutant mechanical monsters fight and blow shit up to Japanese metal. How could you not love that? In essence, all Cybernetics Guardian amounts to is an excuse to have monster fights, and by God, that's what we got. No less, and certainly no more. It's a breezy 40-minute set with a lot of kitsch value. If you can find it for around $10, I'd say go for it. But if it comes with Genocyber, well, at least you have a new drink coaster. You know, it's getting to be that time of year, isn't it? Where the air is a little bit crisper, the... Leaves turn brown, and young millennials' thoughts turn to spoopiness. It's Halloween month, bitches. Till next time. <coughs>